They are badly injured but alive, no longer trapped beneath the ground, but still far from safe in enemy hands. Russia releasing these pictures of evacuated Ukrainian fighters, along with a promise that their treatment will conform to international standards. Finally, after weeks of enduring the unimaginable. No food, no water, no medicine, says Ludmilla, who shows me her son Anatoly. His leg was amputated beneath the steelworks. She tells me she's a bit calmer now because she hopes he was on one of the buses, but says, I just wish there was someone who could guarantee their safety so they won't go missing now, so that nothing will happen to them there. They lost about 20, 30 kilograms. Lily's husband, her childhood sweetheart, was in there too. We have uh, maybe a kind of hope, a little kind of hope, but uh, we don't trust Russia at all. We don't know how to feel, what to feel and what to think. How can they, with Russian backfighters releasing footage like this, apparently patrolling the ruins? Beneath them are believed to be men still waiting to learn their fate. We're right in front of Azovstal, he says. Our task, to clean it out and to eliminate the enemy, these Nazis. But that enemy successfully held off everything the Russians could throw at them for 82 days, a powerful symbol of resistance. Ukraine needs Ukrainian heroes, alive, said President Zelensky. Thanks to the actions of the armed forces of Ukraine intelligence, the negotiating team, the Red Cross and the UN, we hope to be able to save the lives of our men. Their plight depends on Moscow's intentions and they remain unclear. The planned exchange with prisoners of war held by Ukraine has already been questioned in Russia's parliament. But so too has Putin's military strategy by a Russian defense analyst on state TV, where any dissent is rare. What's really remarkable is that no one steps in as he grows increasingly scathing. However much we hate to admit it, he says, virtually the entire world is against us. And it's that situation we need to get out of. Persuading Putin of that could be the best hope for the men behind Mariupol's last stand, who stopped fighting only when their president assured them their mission was complete. But the fight may be just beginning for those they've left behind. Pressing for the safe return of their men, a vow they've made and one they're determined to keep. Rachel Younger, News at 10, Kyiv.